Pitmasters, today we are smoking up a brisket. So every year around the week of Christmas, I like to smoke up a, Christ uh, a Christmas brisket. Uh, it's just something I've started doing and I want to keep it going. So anyway, today we've got a, bris uh, a flat end brisket. Uh, so the point's removed uh, and I use the flat end to cut into slices. So what we're going to do is trim down this fat cap to about a quarter inch of fat. Uh, that way we don't have any of that large, hard, unrenderable fat collagen that won't break down. But we want to leave that thin amount there just so it's enough that it breaks down. But it, you know, it also uh, helps keep the, the meat moist as well. So we're going to trim this entire brisket down to about a quarter inch of fat. And then we're going to get it rubbed up. So my go-to rub for a good brisket flat end is the Butcher's Axe Bullseye Beef Rub. Just a real good all-round beef rub. Great for brisket, tri-tip, steak, you name it. So because this is quite a big cut, uh, and we really want a nice bark to form on this brisket, we're gonna rub it up really, really liberally. I know I say that with all our cuts of meat, but um, this stuff, th this rub is real light too. It's not very heavy on one single ingredient. So we're not really gonna overpower it with salt or pepper or anything like that. So we're gonna use a fair amount to get a good bark. Now we're going to wrap this thing up in cling wrap and get it in the fridge and let it sit uh, until tomorrow morning when we get it on the smoker. Let that rub set in overnight. Alright, it's 5am and i got the Traeger fired up with hickory pellets at 250 Fahrenheit. Now I know you get a better flavour out of the offset smoker or the bullet smoker or whatever, but you know what, I want to go back to bed and um, Pellet Smoker does a great job of monitoring that temp for me, and we're going to end up with a great result anyway. Let's get this thing on. Okay, so it's 8.30am. Uh, this has been on from about 5.15. Um, our pit did slightly cool down a little bit. Um, I think the pellet grill shouldn't do that, but it might have been a bit of ash build up or something like that. So, um, for about half an hour there, it did drop. But over the course of a 12 hour cook, that's nothing to be too concerned about. And luckily my alarm sort of triggered me to come out here and reset this thing. So I'm here looking for a five, six, seven, eight. For about three hours, we've been cooking steady. We'll have a quick look and we'll spray it and we'll come back and spray it then every hour after. Uh, and then once it hits around 160 Fahrenheit internal, we'll wrap it. So we'll give this thing a good spray. See our bark starting to form, but we just want to stop this thing from drying out. Uh, it's 10 a.m. So this has been going for about four, four and a half hours. It's at 160, almost 165 Fahrenheit internal, which means now we're going to wrap it in some butcher paper um, and speed up that cook a little bit. Looking good. Bark starting to form. Let's wrap this thing up. So now to uh, Texas crutch this uh, brisket, just to avoid it from, you know, getting stuck in the stall, which means it's not going to move for quite a while. We're going to speed up the cook, and um, while the butcher paper mice might somewhat compromise the bark a little bit, uh, it will a lot less than using tin foil will, and it will also keep the brisket basing on its own juices, so we get a really uh, moist, juicy final result. Put a bit more water on there as well, just to moisten it up. We'll give it another layer just to get it wrapped nice and tight, all edges tightened up, and then we're going to get this thing back on the smoker and run it in this butcher paper all the way until the end of the cook, until we reach about 200 to 205 internal Fahrenheit. Um, but again, that's just a guide. Really, the ultimate test will be letting it probe like butter. Okay, we're all wrapped up. Let's get this thing back on the smoker until the end of the cook. Alright, this thing's been on here for about another five hours, wrapped up, so um, the meter is, the smart thermometer is telling us uh, around 202 Fahrenheit, but the real test is we're going to probe it in different spots with the instant read, and as I can feel right now, it's probing like butter all the way around, which tells us that this thing is pretty much ready to re-wrap, get in the towel, and get in an esky and rest for the next couple hours. Yeah, that's probing straight through. Alright. Let's rewrap this thing, get it nice and tight, double lay it again, and then um, we'll chuck it in the esky nice and tight, put a towel over the top to insulate it a bit, and let it rest for at least one and a half to two hours. And then we'll come back and slice this baby up. All 
Alrighty, after about six hours smoked unwrapped, then about another five hours wrapped, and then about an hour and 45 minutes, closer to two hours in the esky. This has been over a 13 hour cook. Time to slice. And this thing is slicing through with pretty much n very little resistance. A little bit of force, maybe could have been slightly tender, more tender, but this is one pretty juicy brisket, and it's slicing with pretty good ease. Nice and juicy in there. Bark stayed pretty well intact, uh, considering that we wrapped. Um, in fact, we wrapped quite, quite early, hence why there's not so much of a smoke ring. With a pellet grill, you kind of kind of try. You, you kind of have to go at sl uh, lower temperatures for a longer amount of time. Um, we were at 250 Fahrenheit, which usually gives you a good smoke ring, but we also had to wrap pretty early on. Overall, it's a great result. Great bark, passes the bend test, and pulls away with ease. A juicy, nice slice of brisket. Served up with some corn cob and some chips. Great result. Perfect dinner. Thanks for watching, everybody. Cheers.